Which is more rare? Volcanic cards getting support or a master duel player that doesn't button mash whenever they have a response? Unfortunately, I have two replays today that show master duel players are exactly that. But more importantly, these replays show the power of Volcanic Shell and that it strikes more fear into my opponents than a stick of deodorant. Speaking of no deodorant, our first opponent is playing Dark Magician. We're going second as this is a blind build, but you wouldn't be able to tell with a hand like this. They start with Dark Magic Circle, but this will meet our Ash Blossom. I figured ashing any of their searchers means game over, and sure enough I was correct. We draw into Barong here, uh, but unfortunately most of the cards in our hand are completely useless as our opponent controls no monsters. We normal the shell, and we go into a Link Karibo, getting in for a measly amount of damage. Going into main 2, we activate the Volcanic Shell and Grave, and our opponent chains Solemn Strike. He knows that shell is too powerful to let resolve. The only thing scarier than one shell is two. We pass turn, but after our opponent draws, he immediately passes back again. The terror of Volcanic Shell has stunned him, almost like some girl came up to him and said hi. For turn we draw another ash, but our opponent has one too because he ashes our shell again this time. To this guy, Volcanic Shell must be the Antichrist incarnate. We summon out the Agni Agnimazood by destroying the shell in Barong, then get in for just a bit more damage than last time, uh, and then we pass. But the writing is on the wall by this point. This man has wasted all of his interaction on a single copy of Volcanic Shell. By the time we finish adding the Fire King Island, our opponent concedes, hoping to never see a Volcanic Shell ever again. Feeding Dark Magician is just another day in the office, but how does Volcanic Shell Turbo fare against an actual meta strategy? Our opponent goes first, but immediately passes, leaving all these going second cards in our hand to rot. We normal summon the Shell, to which our opponent immediately max sees. They know that Volcanic Shell is full Orcist combo, and they need to deter me from doing that by all means necessary. I opt to destroy the Grunix here so that it'll come back out of fear of being OTK'd, uh, hopefully keeping me alive by being able to float. But our opponent imperms. He doesn't want this Shell in Grave, because the Grunix would destroy it. He knows the advantage can swing the game in my favor. My opponent then proceeds to make some of the worst Lyralisk Tri Brigade plays I've ever seen. I see the Lyralisks thinking that he goes into a uh, Nightingale into Zeus, but he goes for a Farajit instead. He summons out a kit, but then does absolutely nothing with the Tri Brigades, and then goes for the uh, Nightingale Zeus line that I thought he was going into in the first place. He attacks over the Volcanic Shell here, even though he wasted an Imperm just to keep it alive. Uh, and then he makes the Downard Zeus plays. So why did he not do this from the start? Why did he not make the Tri Brigade plays after going for the Zeus? And why does he attack the Shell even though he tried to keep it alive? So here's an interesting interaction here. I use my turn player priority to normal summon the Arvada, because Arvada has a monster negate by destroying one other fire monster in my hand. Now I have this Garunix in hand as well. So I normal summon the Arvada and he takes the bait. He procs the Zeus, but I can chain my Arvada, guaranteeing that I destroy this Garunix in hand, um, which after the Zeus board wipes, the Garunix will come back and board wipe the Zeus in return. So our opponent, so a whole bunch of random effects activate here. The Farajit, the Kit, the Fire King Island, which doesn't do much. <laughs> but uh, we have these two Ashes in hand, which we've kind of been saving the entire game for specifically Nerval. Uh, and he finally uses it. So without much left to do, we'll just add the Volcanic Shell and pass it back to our opponent. Uh, to which the Garunix will come back during the standby phase and destroy the Zeus. But he will just pass turn because he pretty much has nothing at this point. 
They pass back to us on an empty field, but uh, pushing for large amounts of damage in one turn is not this deck's strong point, so we just add another shell, get in with Garunix, and we will save our resources for next turn, just in case. Our opponent draws a Warbler for turn, must be nice. And I Ash the Cobalt here, even though it doesn't really matter, because he can just make a Recital anyway, uh, because this deck is super fun. Uh, but then they make a huge mistake by normal summoning this uh, Sapphire Swallow. Because look, with the Recital, he adds a Nerval. But without any way to normal summon the Nerval, he just makes an All Mirage and he's gonna pass. I guess even players like this can be carried to Platinum if they play meta. From here we easily win the game. We use the advantage we got from our shells in order to summon the Enigma Zood. Uh, and they chain All Mirage even though he just banishes, so... He summons out and we can easily get in for game. Uh, <laughs> the level of play in Platinum is uh, truly embarrassing sometimes. Please, Konami, give us some fire support soon. It's been over 1,000 days since Volcanic has received support, you know, only if you consider Blaze Cannon an actual Volcanic card. It's also been over 2,000 days since Fire Kings have received support all the way back in Circuit Break in 2018. Konami, why do you hate fire decks so much? <laughs>